Armin Navabi is founder of AtheistRepublic.com. He is an ex-Muslim himself, and he's part of the story of a guy named Sahail Arabi, who is uh, currently in prison and undergoing some tremendously horrible treatment. Uh, you, I'm guessing, are like I was just a few days ago. You'd never heard the name Sahail Arabi and don't know why you should care. And that's why I want to have a conversation. Armin Navabi, great to talk to you, my friend. How you doing? Thank you for having me. Let's talk about Sahail Arabi and sort of the origin to this story. Can you give us the basic foundation of what we're about here today? Yes, yeah, Sahil Arabi is a photographer and a blogger in Iran, and I think in around 2014 it was that he um, made a Facebook post anonymously, but I don't know how they figured out it was him, but they, they figured out it was him. Um, he, he insulted Prophet Muhammad, and he was um, sentenced to death originally, and because of uh, pressure and protest by activists that death sentence was removed but he's still in jail uh, since then for for just a simple facebook post being um about prophet muhammad he's been in prison since then and he's been tortured mistreated he's been on hunger strike and this is a this man is a hero because he's been on hunger strike for the sake of other prisoners he's been mistreated he's been um he's been so He's been violently attacked so badly that he needed to go to hospital, but he's been, he hasn't been treated for his injuries in prison. And the problem is that people have forgotten about him. Like originally, uh, when he went to jail, uh, when he was on, on death row, he got a lot of attention. But after a while, um, his case was completely forgotten. And he he was rotting in jail and he was being tortured. Tortured, like I'm not just exaggerating that. Like he was beaten so badly that he needed to go to the hospital. And when they took him to the hospital, they said like, oh, we don't have any room for him. Yeah, and they just took him back without any treatment. Um and and if, if more recently, his uh, his the 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 one person that uh, never forgot about him and constantly tried to make sure, constantly tried to get him out, what is was was his mother. And more recently, his mother was uh, arrested and this you know uh, as well because of all the attention she was bringing to the case. But we uh, we just we decided that um, we need to we need to start. Um, protests and in the streets in front of Iran's embassy and other places in multiple cities at the same time to bring some attention to it. And, and you know, so, some of our members came out and we, um, and, and thanks to, uh, thanks to people, thanks to channels like Cosmic Skeptic and Rationality Rules, we managed to bring some attention to it because what they saw, they were, uh, we did this in multiple cities. I, I was in London while we were doing this and they came out as well and they were, uh, they were kind enough to to record it and cover it on their channel. So we got this whole, pro so Hill Arabi became a lot more known because of them. So I really thanks to them. It was and interesting too, if I can jump in here, that uh, whenever you were out front, all of a sudden, there were police officers telling you that, well, you can't be here. And then one police officer was asking you for your name and your phone number. I don't even know why that's relevant. Yeah. But you had that exchange, right? Yeah, I mean, what I realize is that when it comes to the police, um, it, is a lot of times they, don't, they assume that you, they don't know your rights here. So you just have to constantly remind them what you, what you are allowed to do. Um, and a lot of people get intimidated by the police here. But I mean, as, as, as strange as that exchange was, I think it was, in the video was also mentioned that at least I get to be able to tell them like, no, sorry, I'm going to continue to protest. And there's literally nothing they can do, right? Like that, that uh, police officer was trying to intimidate me by asking me my name, but telling me to go to not stand there, go somewhere else. And I was trying to be as respectful as possible. And I told them like, you know what, I don't have to answer your question and I don't have to move. And those are all according to the law in the UK and um, most other, um, you know, Western countries. Um, and a lot of people were uh, happy that I stood my ground and, and didn't give in to the police because that is the law. Like I was not doing anything illegal. But at the same time, I'm still very grateful to the fact that the laws in the UK allows me to be able to tell the police, like, yes, yeah, sorry, I'm not going to listen to you. 
and I, it's not I'm I'm doing everything legally and I don't have to listen to you and I'm going to just stand my ground and th- th- I mean that's a luxury that people don't appreciate that they have I mean you can't do that in Iran for example so hell Arabi doesn't get to do that they're like yeah sorry I'm, I'm going to be able to insult your prophet and, and there's nothing you could do they're like they're like I'm no, they can't. You're 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 in jail now, and you're you could we could actually execute you if you want. So the thing is, the pressure, the fact that we have the luxury here and they don't have it there, we have to use this luxury, right? We have to. There are people in many countries where they don't have the voice that we have. So it's it's to me it's very obvious what well, this voice has to be used to bring attention to the people that don't have a voice right i mean again Sohil Arabi, when think about it even though he has a, he don't he doesn't have a voice he can't he he says things and he tries to do things that i myself i'm not brave enough to do in if it, if i was in his position he used his voice even in iran to bring attention to other prisoners when he was in jail even when he wasn't getting enough attention on his case, he he used he went on hunger strike because he learned about the situations of some other prisoners, and he was on hunger strike to bring attention to the other prisoners, other political prisoners. Like this, this is how big of a hero this person is, right? So if a person with but that is. In such a situation, like living in Iran, not having a voice, the little voice that he has is he's using for other people. What excuse that, that does that leave for the rest of us living in free countries? Like if he's if he's trying to do that for other prisoners, why are we not doing this for him? Well, what's right? uh, what do we do now? I mean, uh, how can we lend our voices to support this man and and to have his case heard again and to hopefully free him? Well, so here's here's the problem. Here's a huge problem, and and this is something that we have to accept that you know we we are we suck at as atheists, right? And this is just reality. When I tell people that, listen, when when they come after Muslims, the Muslims they make they they make noise, like they they raise hell. They they're like. You know, if if Muslims are being attacked in Burma or in Palestine or whatever, right? Um, the Muslim, you know, whatever I, you could say that agenda is something else, but at least at least they're there for each other. Okay, they're there for each other. When when you attack Muslims, other Muslims are there for each other. When they attack Christians, okay, when Christians in Egypt are being attacked, when Christians in like China are being attacked, Christians in churches, they're like. They 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 make sure that their voices are heard. They they lobby government. They fundraise. They support the fellow Christian refugees when they come up and shore. They're there for each other. The Christians are there for each other. When you go after Hindus, the Hindus are there for each other. When you go after the Jews, the Jews are there for each other. But when you go after atheists, when you go after hate atheists, the loudest voice that you hear is silence. Is silence because and there is, there is no cost, there is no cost to go after atheists and blasphemers and and because there is no cost, they go after atheists and I tell people that your silence is killing people, your silence is killing people and they think like oh no, there's not going to make a difference, it's not going to make a difference if we go in the streets, if it's not going to make a difference if we make online campaigns and raise like you. I don't know if I can swear on your show, Seth. Can I swear on your show? Absolutely. Not <laughs> like, you motherfuckers. You, how, many, <laughs> how many times do we have to show you that this is actually works? So Hale's own case, the reason why he is not on death row anymore is because some people came out. Okay? How many times people were being tortured and all of a sudden their torture was put on stop because of people coming out? These countries, they care about their international, their image. They care about their PR. They care because when you when you go out in the streets, if you manage to get any news coverage on this, then the politicians pay attention. And the politicians put pressure on these countries. And these countries care, care about their trade agreements. And because the politicians in, the, in these Western countries, they want to get votes. When they see some case, some human rights case could uh, supporting it could get them voice, they put pressure on Iran. They put pressure on Saudi Arabia. They put pressure 
Russia and Bangladesh and Pakistan. And so, it, and sometimes, a lot of times, it doesn't work. Okay, a lot of times, we go, we make petitions, we go in the street, we try to get some news coverage on it, and it doesn't work. But it works enough times for us for it to be worth trying it wor- it works enough times for it to be worth trying and the thing is it will work even more if more of you motherfuckers got off your asses and came into the street and ma- it, it, if there was more of us in the streets for Sahel Arabi there would be more news coverage there would be more there would be more media the people sitting there and the you know people say oh atheists just can make memes and make articles and they don't do they don't do real shit. Well, this was a chance. Why didn't you come out? It was in multiple cities. Why didn't you figure? Why didn't other people like why are they not? Why, why are not more people covering this? Why are we? You know, this, what we're trying to do here's our plan. Okay. We're tra- at Asis Republic, we're trying to... Ke- this was our first attempt at uh, organizing some protests, right? Um, and it was pretty good for our first time. And now we're going to try to keep learning what we did right, what we did wrong, and then highlight other cases. We want to say... We want to be the cost, the noise that you hear when you come after Asis. We want to be that... Because right now there's a huge vacuum. There's a, there's a silence. And we want to become... The, we want to fill that gap. We want to be... Uh, you know, provide the the service that it doesn't it that is not there. We want to be the cost associated with going after atheists, so that next time, next time, like even if the Sohail doesn't get out, we want to make it known that if you go after atheists, there's going to be an international reaction, just like there will be if they go after any other group. Right? And next, like if this keeps growing, hopefully, if this keeps growing. The, the next time any government or any organization or any people, any group of people do, if they want to go after atheists, I want them to put in their calculation on whether or not they're going to torture the next Sohail Arabi, they're going to imprison the next Sohail Arabi, or if they're going to put on death row the next Sohail Arabi. I want them to put in their calculations, in their decision making, the international embarrassment that we're going to bring to, bring to them. Before they do that, but if if for that cost to be a bigger cost, we need to become a bigger community. And this is this is a problem here. When 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 we atheists, when we want to get together and we want to do stuff, when we want to we want to build a community or a movement or become a louder voice. Because right now we we're, we're not a loud voice. We need to become a louder voice. Okay, we need to become we need to support each other. But people are like oh shit, look look what you're doing, Armin. You just turn atheism into a religion. You're turning atheism into a religion. Why? Because we're getting together and getting shit done. Apparently, apparently, religions have a monopoly over getting shit done. Apparently, religions have a monopoly over community. Community. This is exactly what they're trying to sell us. This is what exactly religions are trying to sell us, and now atheists are selling it to us. Based on the standards that these people have for religion, my study group in university was also a religion. If, if, if every four, to, every four uh, group people get together and try to do something, every human rights activism is, is all of this, any political movement that we're trying to do, like, oh, you're playing politics. All of the religions play politics. So now you're doing that as well. Like, really? So you think you're only religions play politics? This is why they're winning. You know, it's interesting because we are atheists are winning the demographic games, right? They're winning. Atheism is growing everywhere. Not the nuns are growing everywhere as well. Like they're growing in the United States. They're growing in the Arab world. Every data shows that they're growing everywhere as 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 a percentage of population. But they're also losing everywhere politically because so many atheists don't get involved. Atheists are losing politically. Secularists are losing politically in the United States in Israel in Malaysia, Indonesia, in the Arab world, in Bangladesh, in everywhere in North Africa, everywhere atheists are losing. In Poland, atheists are losing. In Germany, in the United Kingdom, it's because we don't get involved, because we think like, oh, it's, that's just let the religions do it. Well, that's why even though we're growing demographically, they're winning politically. They're becoming, they're bec- their, their influence and our lives is growing even with smaller numbers than before because we don't want to play their game. Well, well, that's 
just give it to them. But we we refuse to do that. A- Atheist Republic, we are building a community. We are uh, we are getting political, and and we are going to you know support each other. But again, and even if you don't like my community, if you like, there's multiple communities. If you know, athe- you don't have to support Atheist Republic, but but get involved with some atheist community. You don't like any of them? Build a community. Build your own atheist community. But build a community because we need to support each other. Okay. Because when we yes, yeah, sir. Well, let me jump in. I appreciate your passion. I really do. Okay. Uh, that's one of the reasons I like you as an activist. I mean, you put your money where your mouth is. If uh, if I may, there are some people who may not be sort of these hipsters who reject activism because it's religious or because they're you know they they don't think it matters. There may be some people who simply don't know what's happening and they don't know how to help. So, in the case of uh, Sahel Arabi, mm-hmm. how do they help? I mean, how is it that we can support you to support him? You know, et cetera. In this case. Well, I'll tell you what our plan is, and you could uh, some people could either support us or you f- uh, copy this uh, model that we're trying to do, right? With your with uh, whatever the organization they're involved or whatever the organization what they want to start, okay? But what we're trying to do is first keep um, keep getting people in the streets, keep starting p- protests, right? Every time we want to highlight one atheist that the, a, a government um, or an organization is, is making life difficult for them, either by jail or discrimination or unfair targeting, torture, putting on different, we're going to, and, and get, guess what? There's more, that, uh, there's way many, uh, too many cases. And uh, this is why we might need other communities because we're not going to be able to uh, to highlight each and every one of them. But um, after Sahel Arabi, we're going to go to the next atheist that is being ignored and needs some more attention. And we're going to come up with plans to go into the street and bring more attention to that person, right? And we're going to try to do it in multiple cities at the same time. Uh, every time we highlight somebody, bring attention. But then this that's the first uh, the first phase. And we, th- th- this first phase, we're going to get better, better and better at it and try to bring larger and larger crowds every time. And the way people could support is by showing up. Just show up. When we next follow Atheist Republic, the next time we have a protest, the next time we're like, look, at this is the next person that we need to bring attention to. You know, either either come in the streets, join the, the protest near you, and if you see there is no protest near you, contact us. I'm like, I want to organize protests near me, right? And even if you can't do that, you're like, you know what, I can't do that. Oh, it's not safe. I might lose my job if I get politically active. Figure out what hashtag we're using around that case. Just post about it. Just post about it. Or at least share the our post about it. So that's phase one. Phase two is for us is to start building connections with local small reporters. It's hard to get it's hard to get bigger like bigger news organizations to pay attention to you, but it's easier to get uh, contact in different cities with local small local reporters and let them know that next time we, look look we had a protest you didn't show up next time next time look we have a protest like. Two weeks from now, can you please show up? Come interview us, cover us, okay, uh, and build more and create a database of reporters that know we have a good relationship with, and every time get them to come and cover the protests that we're doing. That would be uh, phase two. Phase three is once we have some. Every time we come at protests, get some news coverage. Use that news coverage to go now to to some politicians. Again, while we're getting started, because we're not big yet, Aces Republic is still learning in the learning process, and we appreciate people that know how to do these things to get in touch with us, or people that have connections to go, come to us. Phase three would to get build, build connections with politicians. Because it's harder to get connection with larger politicians, we're talking local, you know, maybe mayors, uh, you know, uh, state governors, you know, again, keep on building on that connections, come up with a database of the politicians that take us seriously. Every time we get some news coverage, we get a politician to make a statement in support of the uh, of the of the person that we're covering or against the government, against the government that is oppressing the person that we're covering. Put some pressure, put some pressure, like what, to get these politicians to say something or even do something or promise to do something so that the government, so that the governments that are attacking atheists 
are targeting ATS. Now they're saying like, look, this is now beyond the protest. This is more than beyond just the media attention and a PR problem. We're now getting politicians to speak against uh, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Pakistan, Iran, or anybody that has done something against it. Again, these are these things scare them. People have to understand. We've seen these government people think, oh, Saudi Arabia doesn't give a shit about this image. No, we have seen them change their behavior based on this kind of pressure. These things do work if they are become bigger. So again, what do we? What do you do? Just show up. Just show up next time. Show up next time. You know you can't post about it. Share the next story. Next time we have a story. Again, even it's not even too late with Sohail Arabif. Look for the hashtag Free Sohail. Post about it. Share the story. Let people know. Again, these news news agency they're following these hashtags. If a hashtag keeps showing up, they realize okay, this is a story people want to know about. They cover it if they see a hashtag is trending. It's not that big of an ask. Let me tell you what you know. You know who's doing. You know, okay. In there, we have atheist activists, right? They, that are fighting for each other, for their for their for their rights that we enjoy here in the West. With so, and we're so ungrateful. Where we have no idea how how unique it is, how unusual it is both geographically and historically to enjoy the rights and the peace that we enjoy today and there are people in Saudi Arabia Iran Bangladesh Pakistan Egypt Indonesia Malaysia that are doing the exact that are doing what I'm doing Seth what I, that is doing that are doing what you're doing right but in those countries at a much greater risk to their to their safety and to their lives they're doing the, uh, the activism that me and you are doing and these are people that are way braver than I would would ever be and they're doing this for each other right but and and I, I, I'm not asking other atheists to do that I'm not asking other atheists to put, to make to make that great of a risk or a sacrifice but given that that what that is what they are doing given that that this is what they're doing is it not fair and it's not enough fair to, for us to at least post about it at least spare a weekend to go out in the streets and do a protest given that we are not risking anything is that is that not is that too much to ask to at least bring more attention to the people that are risking everything i mean these are the freedom fighter, fighters of our time these are the freedom fighters of our time every every sense of security peace and uh, that you enjoy today is because somebody somewhere risks something right like the, the every so somebody r sacrificed their safety their life their sense of security somewhere for us here in canada or united kingdom or united states or germany or france to enjoy the peace that we enjoy today or the rights that we enjoy today and now the people that don't have the peace don't don't have those rights don't have those freedom they're fighting to get it the ones that do have it at least the least we could do is try to bring attention to it and okay. be, become their voice uh i saw that cosmic skeptic had shared a uh, i don't know how effective these are but it's it's something this uh, change.org petition Mm -hmm. Get it up here on screen. Uh, they're seeking, I believe, uh, 25,000 hey. signatures. Is that right? Yeah, Cosmic Skeptic and Rationality Rules. And, nope. and again, thank you, thank Good. you, thank you to both of these guys because these guys' voices and the youth, especially because they're uh, they're big in the Generation Z. I think Cosmic Skeptic, uh, uh, Genetically Modified Skeptic, and Rationality Rules, they are big with Generation Z atheists, right? So I, I mean, if they bring attention to something like this, that means that maybe we get uh, instead of just content consumers in the atheist movements we get activists in the atheist movement so popularizing activism and again thank you to you Seth for bringing for bringing attention to this yes. because we need to we need, this is going beyond just producing and consuming content this is actually this is real activism and this is what we need more of in the atheist community well, oh, sorry, I, I'm sorry I just want to tell everybody that I will put the link to this petition in the description box so maybe I hope that everybody would go and I mean, it takes a few seconds to lend your name lend your voice uh, right. and uh, help uh, help them get to 25 plus thousand signatures that would really be helpful so. right and again when it comes to petitions people say petitions don't do anything no that the, the, what the truth is that petitions usually don't do anything again they still but given the how how little the cost of signing a petition is the fact that they work sometimes makes it 
worth trying, right? They work enough times. They have worked enough times. Petitions have made the differences. Not enough. Not enough times. Like most of the times, they don't do anything. But given that they have worked sometimes, and given that the cost of signing a petition is nothing, that means we should sign petitions because you you give nothing and it might work. You know. What I'm, I, I, you understand what I'm saying, Sam? Yeah, I got you. I got you. Well, you know, the problem with Armin Nababi has always been that he never says what's on his mind. You know, <laughs> come out of your shell, man. You know? No, no, I, I, um, I appreciate, you know, bringing the, the story of this man to light and people say, why does it matter? And I always say, well, you know, it does, they'll make up it. They'll, people are great at coming up with excuses as to why they shouldn't participate. Well, we need to focus on the need at home first, or I don't know who this person is, or it's not my former religion or whatever. And I think to myself, this is a fellow human being. Mm, and, great. uh, I'm interested in where the opportunities lie. And if the opportunities to help someone lie over a specific human drawn border, fine. If the person happens to be in a culture that I'm not participating in, fine. You know, this is a member of the human race who is being oppressed. And this is also, I think, uh, an opportunity for us to send a message that we as non-believers, we as atheists, our numbers are rising, we are formidable, and we have to, we, we are sticking together, and uh, we care if human rights are violated, whether it's a, an atheist, Christian, Muslim, whatever. So I'll include the uh, change.org petition in the description box. I would encourage everybody to go and sign that sucker, and hopefully, Armin, you'll have a, an update for us. We'll watch the story from from our vantage as well and see what happens next, okay? Right, just just uh, people. It's easy to go after atheists. It's easy to go after atheists. Let's make it difficult for people to go after atheists. Armin Navabi, atheistrepublic.com. Thanks, everybody, and sign the petition in the description box of this show.